Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Truly, He's our provider. Truly, He's our giver. He's our supplier. We don't have to live in such a way stuck and wondering, Lord, I really going to meet my need. He's more than enough. He's always more than enough to meet all our needs. You know something, when Jesus lived on earth, he lived by faith. Although he was the son of God, he still lived as a son of man. He exercised his faith just like the way we exercise our faith. Many times he called himself the son of man. Although he was the son of God because he was not the son of Joseph. He was the son of God. So he lived just like the way you and I live by faith. As a son of man. He's a son, he, he was the son of man when he was living here on earth. Just like the way we believe for things. Just like the way we believe for our healings. Just like the way he lived in divine health. He was, sometimes you might say, okay, he was living a supernatural life because he was sinless. What are you right now? Sinless. You are the righteousness of God. So if you are the righteousness of God, then you are just as he is. Or just like the way he lived, you could live too. That's the reason the Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 2 that you were crucified with Christ. Now Paul says it. We can also say the same thing. I'm crucified with Christ. Which means just like the way Jesus died, I died. Nevertheless, I still live. How do I live now? Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The resurrected Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, in the flesh, in the natural, I live by the faith of the Son of God, the same faith that Jesus had. I now operate in the same faith. Who loved me and who gave himself for me. So, don't you ever come to a conclusion by saying Jesus was the son of God and he was a supernatural. He was supernatural and he was God himself and uh, surely miracles ought to always happen through him. No, he built his faith up to the level that he was able to work the works of God and uh, and let people know that God is a good God. If ever you want to know who God is, go to the book of Luke, John, Matthew, and Mark, and find out the will of God. You can see whatever Jesus did is he did by the will of God because he was walking by faith. He grew. He, he lived for 30, 30 years studying the word of God, fellowshipping with the Father, and then he, at the age of 30, he started his ministry, and for three and a half years, he did a, he, he did a powerful ministry, but he built himself for 30 years. The Bible says he grew in stature before man and before God. He went and spoke with the people. Yeah, that's right. Luke 2.52 says, Jesus increased in wisdom. Well, if he, if he was all that wisdom, why did he have to increase wisdom? Because he was a son of man. He increased in wisdom and stature in favor with God and man. He was a God-pleaser who walked by faith and he had favor among men. Not all the time, not all the men. But he had favor. And in favor with God and man. 
So how did this happen? He walked just like you and me. If we get out of the, this thought that we had, that was Jesus, who am I? Well, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Oh, I'm just a man. No, you're not just a man, you're a son of God. You're a son of God. That's why we expect much from you. I expect much from myself. Because I know that I'm a son of God, even are you. So are you. Because we are sons of God, we encourage one another. We expect the best of all what God has. I mean, get the cream of all that God is in you. And God, what Jesus has done for you, through which the curse was removed, and the, you're a blessed man. You're a blessed woman. You're increasing with wisdom and stature and in the favor with God and man. You're going around doing the same works that Jesus did. The Bible says in Acts 10, 38, Jesus, the son of man, how God anointed Jesus who grew in Nazareth. He grew in Nazareth. Although he was born in Bethlehem, he grew in Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. You could also put your name there. How God has anointed me. And if you want to put your birthplace or the place you grew and say, with the Holy Ghost and with power, and I go around doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil, for God is with me. You can say the same thing. Jesus never came to show off. He came to show us how to be disciples and how to walk in the ways of the Lord and how to please God and do the works of God. Of course, he is a show. I would say God is a bigger show of looking at the world around my with colors and all kinds of things. God, you are truly a show of Lord. Great are you. But Jesus didn't come to show off. He said, I'll teach you how you should do this. He commanded the winds to cease. And he spoke peace to the seas. And he looked at the disciples at the same pace and rebuked the disciples. Put that scripture, I believe it's in, Mark, in Matthew 14. And he rebuked the disciples. He commanded peace and he rebuked the disciples at the same pace and said, why are you so fearful? <clears throat> Is it Matthew 14? Yeah, we should read those scriptures because we kind of go through these scriptures and read them and we think, yeah, that was Jesus. Who do you think you are? Ask yourself, who am I? Who, think, who thinks I am? And I'm encouraging you today. Who do you think you are? Nothing less than what Jesus had. Oh, that's being too, I mean, that's false teachings. That's not false teaching. Jesus came that he might do those things and show us how we could do these things. And Peter, I think it's in, do you find that scripture? Matthew 8, okay, well, Matthew 8, let's see. Matthew 14 also, it's about, Matthew 8, how he rebuked. Yeah, Matthew 8. Yeah, that's right, Matthew 8. I get that scripture. Matthew 8, yeah. And he said that, why are you fearful? Go to the verses before that. And his disciples came to, came to him and woke him up because of the strong winds and the boat was being filled. And saying, Jesus, Lord, save us, we perish. 
And he said unto them, Why are you fearful? O ye of little faith, he rebuked them. Then he arose and rebuked. Now here, Matthew sees it in one way. We see Mark 4 sees it in a different way. He says, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? That word little faith is not the amount of faith. It's, it's, it's the duration of your faith. Duration of your faith. O ye of little faith, why is your faith all of a sudden at a high level and all of a sudden it's down and then not? I mean, the duration of your faith, why you go for a while and then you stop, you go for a while and you stop. O ye of little faith, why are you fear? Fear is the greatest enemy in your life. Consider him as the greatest deceptive enemy. The devil has no power, the only power that he has is to deceive you with fear. That's all he has. You are, why are you fearful, O ye uh, of little faith? Then he came, then he arose and he rebuked the winds and the sea. And here he first rebukes them, but in Mark I think he rebukes them later. So I don't know how it, it could be a different uh, I must go through the scriptures and see how it could be. Let's see in Mark 4. Mark 4, I believe. Yeah, Mark 4, when he was, verse 38. He was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. While all these things are happening around, verse 37 says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship. So that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship. Asleep on a pillow. And they awake him. And said unto him. Master carest thou not that we perish. What a prayer. What a prayer of unbelief. Don't you care that we are all going to perish? Don't you care that we are all going to perish? That's not a, that's not a prayer of faith. That's a prayer of unbelief. Carest thou not that we perish? And the next verse, he arose and rebuked the winds and said unto the sea, I mean, he spoke to the seas, peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. And the next verse, with the same pace, he rebuked them. He said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? How is it that you don't have any faith? What happened to your faith? I believe this must have been a long discussion, a while at least. So Matthew got his part of it and Mark got his part of it and they put together. And here he says, why are you fearful? How is it that you don't have faith? How is it that you have no faith? And Matthew heard it also. And Matthew said, O ye of little faith, why are you afraid? O ye of little faith. So when I read the Bible, I collect all this together and I'm able to understand it rightly. Why are you fearful? O ye of little faith. That's a great enemy to your walking in the supernatural. He arose and he rebuked the winds and the seas. And there was great calm. So don't you ever think, my, oh, I don't think I can be like Jesus. You are already like Jesus. You are already like Jesus. You are born of the seed of God's word. Just as Mary conceived God's word into her womb and birthed Jesus, conceived Jesus, when you got born again, you had the same birth that Jesus had. You're born of the incorruptible seed of God's word. The incorruptible is indestructible. Indestructible. That's why you have eternal life in you. So you have, I mean, you're supposed to be walking in the realm you and I are supposed to be walking in the realm and we should expect much from us. 
that's the reason we got to encourage one another encourage one another encourage one another encourage one another in hebrews it says it's a command given in hebrews chapter 3 and verse number hebrews 3 we'll go to that scripture hebrews 3 and verse number 12 verse number 12 hebrews take heed brethren Let's see if there's anything more than that there, okay? Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an un- evil heart of unbelief. I'll tell you one thing. Unbelief is the greatest danger that can take you to any kind of a sin in life. Unbelief is the number one sin that will take you to fear, doubting God's word, that can take you to any kind of a sin lying cheating adultery fornication it's all it all begins from unbelief unbelief when you are when you when you when you are in unbelief an evil heart of unbelief how do i get an evil heart of unbelief it comes through evil thoughts do you really think that there is god do you really think that you got to live it this way do you think that you should be doing how about this if you live like this and if this would have olives and buds and all those thoughts create a heart of unbelief lest there be any of you not one of us should be in unbelief lest there be any of you any will heart of unbelief in departing every everyone who has departed has departed from the living god and they are worshiping a dead god either a dead statue or a dead form of living or dead theology or living saying oh yes i'm a believer i i i follow the 10 commandments as much as i could that's departing from the living god if you if if you're following the living god you're going to say i can do all things through christ jesus who strengthens me philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 says i can do all things through christ jesus who strengtheneth me i can do all things i can do all things i can overcome this temptation i can overcome this situation i can overcome this financial pressure i can overcome this sickness i can do all things through christ jesus who strengthens me that's following a living god not a dead theology not something that is dead you're going to talk about a living god a living one not not a dead one a living one so going back to hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12 take heed brother unless any of you be any of you having a uh, of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living god he is a living god that's why you experience healing in your body he's a living god because he answers your prayer he's a living god who comforts you in all your tribulation he comforts you so that in return you could comfort somebody who is in tribulation you 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 are you are somebody who is who is working in such a manner that you're receiving and re- and releasing it receiving and releasing it receiving and releasing it and and you're always on top you're not drawing it out of the bottom of the barrel but you're you're on top all the time because you're receiving and releasing it and the more you release the more you get the more you encourage others you get encouraged the more you encourage others the more you you get encouraged the more you talk words of healing and joy and satisfaction and comfort and, and the truth you're not talking of something that may not happen you're talking about something that will that surely does happen in this generation even as david served the lord in his generation you serve the lord in your generation you're serving the living god you're following the living god you're believing in the living god an evil heart of unbelief the bible talks about the 12 spies who went to spy out the land 
they didn't believe when god brought them out of egypt and god said listen i'm taking you out of bondage in the book of exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 He said, I'm calling you Moses. I want you to come and release these people out of the bondage. I'm calling you out. I'm come down to deliver them out of the land, out of the hand of the Egyptians. And the Egyptians refer to the world. The, the word Egypt, it refers to the world. It refers to, to whatever addictions you were addicted to. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptian and to bring them up into the land in bring them up out of the land bring them up up out of the land into the land of uh, into the in the land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey so I'll bring you out of bondage and i'm bringing you to a large area where i release you and i set you free and i'm bringing you into the land of milk and honey your needs and your wants milk is a necessity honey i have wants somebody might say oh god only meets your needs don't try to ask more than you really need but here i can see he makes you lie down in green pastures and he says i'll give you all your needs and your wants and if your needs are met that's good but when you have your wants met you will also want to give somebody who really has a need that's how god is under the place of the canaanites and the hitites and the amorites and the perizzites and the hewites and the Jeb- i mean these are all spirits evil spirits we are living among such people i brought you out i brought you out but all with i have already given you the power and the authority to overpower them i have given you power and authority to overpower all these spirits spirits of pride spirits of envy spirits that draw you to witchcraft spirits that take you to place are these all spirits that are mentioned but god says i have given you the name which is above every other name i have given you the name above every other name he has brought us out of the world into the promised land and in the promised land we have our enemies around us but we are supposed to overcome them we are supposed to overcome them If you are passive and you don't want to overcome they will overcome you surely. And if you are the kind of person who says I don't care much about you know overcoming I just want to be religious Satan is going to just let you be where you are but you're not going to enjoy the goodness of God. So if you're going to keep your mouth shut and if you don't speak words that are relevant to your salvation he says how can I deliver you? in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse number 17 the lord says you bind me by your own words if you say in your heart these nations are more stronger than i how can i dispossess them if you keep saying my look at the glamour look at how strong they are look how wealthy they are look how what what they could do well don't look to them look to the lord the provider of all good things and start saying my god supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus the lord is my shepherd and i shall not want he shall bless me he shall bless me to the to the fullest i like to read that blessing scripture in deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 3 onwards blessed shall you be in the city you're blessed in the city blessed shall you be in the field you're blessed keep 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 on going to the next one blessed 
shall you be, uh, shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of the cattle and the increase of the kind and the flocks. God wants you so blessed in every aspect of your life, socially. Be blessed in the right manner. Instead of trying to please the, please the world, live the highest form of living. God is going to supply everything to you and you're going to be so blessed beyond measure. The next verse. Blessed shall be thy baskets and thy store. Call it whatever you want to. Your store can be your bank account. Your basket could be something that you're, that you're using on a daily basis. You're blessed any which way. Verse 6. Blessed shall you be when thou comest in. Blessed shall you be when you go goes out. When you're coming in to the home, you're blessed. When you're going out of the home, you're blessed. When you're going into the office, you're blessed. When you're coming out of the office, you're blessed. Wherever you are, you're blessed. People can put charms against you, but you're just, you're just trampling all over and saying, I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed man. My going out is blessed. My coming in is blessed. I'm always blessed. The next verse the Lord shall, the Lord, look to the Lord. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. People who have risen up against you, the Lord shall cause them to be smitten before your face. Now that does not mean that you've got to make enemies in your workplace or those who are work, working things against you, but you're going to see how the devil who plotted and planned things against you, right before your face, you're going to see his plans all disrupted. He planned it in such a way that he would fall into the pit, but you, God will prepare something over the pit so that you would walk easy. It's hard to walk over, a, try to jump over a pit. But God will make it easy for you to move forward. And this shall come against you one way. And they'll be so confused because of the fear that is in you. God will cause fear to come upon your enemies. And they would run seven ways. They come in one way, but they're... They are so confused, they are running away from you seven ways. The scriptures that would bless you, read them, shout them out. This is the blessing of Abraham. And Jesus, seed of Abraham and you are an heir together with Abraham. In, in uh, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, if you are Christ, if you belong to Christ, you are the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. If you are Christ, then you are the seed of Abraham. All the promises are made to Abraham because Abraham in obedience brought his son on the altar and offered. And God said, I'm amazed. Your only son you brought. I'm going to bless you and your seed. I'm going to bless you and your seed. And, your, and the physical seed is Isaac. Through which we find Israel was born. And through which we find that Jesus came forth. And we Gentiles have no relationship with the Jews. Who had a covenant with God. But because we are the seed. Because we believe in Christ then you are the seed of Abraham. People who believe in Christ, they're the seed of Abraham. And heirs according to the promises. Heirs according to the promise. So believe in God and start moving forward. Going back to Genesis chapter, Deuteronomy chapter number 28 and verse 8, okay? Yeah, 8. Let's go to verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee. You know, I like the commanded blessings. 
I like commanded blessings. You know, they are like shooting waters coming down into your life and nobody can stop that blessing. God commands a blessing. The Lord, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse. And, it's, and in all that thou settest your hand unto, he has commanded a blessing. Whatever you set your hands upon, he said, I'll bless you. These are not empty words. These must be believed and spoken out of your mouth. And if you can't believe these words, start speaking it, start speaking it, start speaking it, and then you start believing it. It all starts with your speaking first. And if you can believe, it's good. But if you say, I, I, I don't really know what it is, but, I, 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 but I'm just going to believe and I'm, I'm going to speak it out. Speaking is good. Speak it out. Whatever I place my hands upon is blessed. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord has given thee. Wherever you are right now, he's blessed you. And if you don't like the place you are in right now, believe God that he will take you to a higher place. Believe God. Connect yourself with the source. Too long have we been trusting in our resources and when they have dried up, we don't know what to do. Now, Elijah was a man who was like passion as we are. He had his, um, he, he had his belief in the, in the resource, in the brook. And God had commanded a raven to bring him food twice a day. And he had the waters in the brook and the brook dried and the raven stopped. His resources died. For some reason the rain stopped. There was no, I mean the rain had already stopped because there was a curse on the land. But God provided for Elijah, the man of God. So are you. And it came to pass after a while, the, book, the brook dried up because there had been no rain. For three and a half years, there was a curse upon Israel. The brook, the brook dried up. No rain. What are we going to do? And the next verse, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, see, when the brook dries and the ravens stop bringing the food, the word of the Lord is still with you. You know, we always have a problem. We think, well, now, for some reason, the brook has dried up. The ravens are no longer bringing the food. But you have the word of the Lord. If you have the word of the Lord, that's more than enough. Because you'll know what to do next. That's how faith comes in place. And people try to think, well, when everything is all right with me, I think I'm having enough faith. When everything drives up, you think you have no faith. That's the biggest lie that you heard from, I mean, then this man, Elijah, the prophet of God, he is supposed to be, probably he's not a man of faith then. Well, now his brook has dried up. Ravens are not feeding him anymore. But he had the word of the Lord come to him. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Let's go to the next verse. Arise and get to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, or a heathen nation, it was Sidon, and, and dwell there. Dwell there, because I have commanded a blessing to come upon you there. It matters where you are. Dwell there, go. Just go there. And dwell there. Now, you're, as it is, you don't have the ravens coming to feed you. You're not having the, the brook is dried up. But you're not faithless. That doesn't mean that you don't have faith. Which means you're waiting for the next command. Lord, what next now? What would you want me to do next? Just because you're going, going through a dry period, that does not mean you're, you're lacking faith. It simply means... Here am I, Lord, what, what next would you want me to do? That's the man of faith. That's the person of faith. And the Lord spoke to him and said, you shall go to this place and dwell there. Behold, 
I have commanded a blessing to come upon you through a widow woman, and there shall you sustain. I have commanded a widow woman there, and he shall sustain you. The widow woman shall take care of you, and you're going to have enough and more. Things are going to happen. Don't think that, you know, okay, mom, I lack faith now. Well, the next thing you would think of is suicidal thoughts are running in your mind. What am I going to do? I'm at the end of everything. I don't have anything to eat now. You're having, your, your situation has so dried up, but you've got to wait for the word of the Lord because he has something for you. He has the next thing coming into you. Believe him. Trust him. Obey him. Wait for the word. Don't think I'm, I'm a man of no faith. I think I've, I've failed God in my life. Yeah, things have dried up. Maybe there would have been some mishap in your life, probably negligence. You did according just as the man of God said it. He did. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cross of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And you can see the next miracle that took place. The child being born, uh, brought back to life. Looking at all these things through the scriptures, don't let fear be your enemy anymore. And unbelief, turning away from the things of God, from the living God. I'm talking about a living God. You know, the beautiful scripture, you can maybe, I don't know whether we have time to read the whole thing, but we'll go to probably Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10. The true God that we serve. It talks about all kinds of gods that people make. And the Lord talks to Jeremiah and tells him to prophesy over the people. And verse number one onwards. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse, uh, chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word of the Lord, which, hear ye the word which the Lord speak, speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Now the house of Israel were, were type and shadow of we Christians who are saved and who have a covenant with God. So God is talking to us, to the covenant people, and saying, people of God, thus saith the Lord, learn not the ways of Way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathens are dismayed at them. Things that are happening around. Don't get dismayed. Don't be fearful. And the customs of the people. The next verse on talks about the customs of the people. How they pull down a tree and then make an idol of it. And... and and dress it up and do all kinds of things, but they are all brutish. It says, verse number eight. Verse number seven, probably. We'll read from verse number seven. Or maybe verse six. For as much there is none like unto thee, O Lord. There is none like unto thee, O Lord. Thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee? Who would not fear thee? Who wouldn't want to fear thee? Who should not fear? Who should not? That word fear, when it comes to fear thee, it simply means, who should not reverence you? Highly. O kings of nations, for it is uh, to thee thou pertain. For as much as among all the wise men of the nations... And to all their kingdoms, there is none like unto thee. Verse number eight. And they are altogether brutish and foolish. And the the stock stock is a doctrine of vanities. 
Their doctrines are vanity. You can see how they do things. The heathens, don't, don't have any heathen practices in your life. They observe times, months, years. You don't have to. Their doc, doc, doctrines are vanities. Silver spread into the plates and is brought from, from Tashish and the gold from Ufas. And the work of the workmen and the hands of the founder, they make gods for themselves. Blue and purple in their clothing, they are all the work of cunning men. But, you can read the rest of the scripture from one to, I read this scripture for a while and I was thinking, Lord, what were we doing all this while without serving the living God? But, in verse 10, the Lord is true. The Lord is the true God. He is the living God, an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignations. Because we serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the great king, the everlasting king. The living God. So don't be afraid and don't get involved with things that will cause fear to come into your life. You have a mediator who is Jesus to your everlasting father. He's always for you and he's not against you. He stands by you and he supports you and he's always with you. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm with you all the days of your life. I'll bless you. I'll bless you going out. Bless you coming in. Read those scriptures from the book of Jerome, from uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 to 15. Where it talks about how God shall make you the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. That you shall prosper the work of your hands so that nobody will be able to stand before you that's his blessing upon your life. Be somebody who is willing to walk just like Jesus. Full of love and faith. Full of life and vitality. And you could say, I'm born of the Father. I'm born of the Father. I can, I can declare that I'm born of the Father. He who is born of God is an overcomer, the Bible says. 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 4. Whoso is born of God, you're born of God. How were you born of God? By believing the message of Jesus. Who was Jesus? Who took the curse away and enabled you to be born of God. That made you, if you're born of God, you're a son of God. You are a child of God. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. Overcomes the world. Overcomes the world. Be victorious over the world. You are not somebody who is giving into the world. You are somebody who is overpowering the world. Overpower I mean, walking in authority and strength because in the spiritual realm, you are blessed. Somebody might say, okay, I'm okay. I, I'm, I feel all right. But then you see, there, there are spiritual uh, powers that are working. And, and, uh, and there, are th there are atmospheres that we're living in. They are so dangerous. But do you know that? You are blessed beyond measure. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 says... You are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Blessed be the Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all, 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 all spiritual blessings, which means in the heavenly realm, you have all authority and power against satanic forces. 
It's only when you, when you start rubbing your flesh together and kind of, you know, let flesh dominate you and walk by your feelings, then you had this fear coming into you. But in the spiritual realm, you are blessed with all. Qualified, blessed, all spiritual blessings. No witchcraft, no witch doctor can stand against you. In the, I mean, they are working out things in the spiritual realm to work against your flesh. But you have a higher power which is incomparable to demon powers. It says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. No weapon that is formed, no witchcraft practiced against you shall prosper. You're afraid because you're, you're down or you're going down the tubes because somebody has practiced witchcraft against you. But when you know Christ, when you know the powers of Christ, you could say, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. No weapon. And also it says in the book of uh, Numbers 23 and verse number 23, surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Referring to you. Referring to you. Neither is there any divination against Israel. Israel and Jacob refers to the one same God that we serve. Jacob, who was a deceiver, who turned to be a Israel, the prince. And just like you and I, we were sinners, now we are turned to be sons of God. It says, no enchantment, no divination can be against you. According to this time, and it shall be said of Jacob and Israel what God has wrought. Thank God for his grace. And he says, I'm your protection. I'm your shield of protection. He says, I'm your shield. Fear not. God is our shield. He's our protection. Genesis 15, 1, he says, after all after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision. When the word of the Lord comes out as a vision, you would see. The, I mean, when you're walking with God, you could see these words coming out to you before you as a vision. And God spoke to Abraham and said, fear not. I mean, Abraham, all this while he enjoyed blessing Melchizedek and he, 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 he refused the king. He said, I will not look up to you, king, for anything. You would turn around and say, you made me rich. Put that scripture up in verse 14, a few verses above. After all these things, after these are the things that happened. And <clears throat> uh, probably 18. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him. He was a priest. He was, he was a priest of God. He blessed him. The priest, he, is a, he is a king of peace. He blessed him and said, Blessed be the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be Abraham of the Most High. I read it wrong. Blessed be Abraham. You are the seed of Abraham. Right? Possessor of heaven and earth. And the next verse and bless the most high God, and he which delivered thine enemies into thy hand, he gave him the tithe of all. And the next verse, he gave the tithe to the king of peace, or he gave tithes to God himself. And the next verse says, now the king of Sodom comes, after he has already made a covenant with almighty God, bringing him the tithe, the king of Sodom comes and says, give me the persons and take the goods. He said, okay, give me the persons. I can always use the person, people as slaves and make goods out of people. You take away the goods because Abraham did a favor for the king by delivering him because of his nephew Lot. And the next verse I see Abraham saying, Abraham said unto the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. And you might, 
And the next verse says, Abraham, I will not take a shoe latchet, a shoe latchet out of you, and or anything out of you. You might say, ah, oh, I made Abraham rich. I'm the guy who gave him all these goods. I'm the guy who really made him a rich man because Abraham knew that God had already given him the blessing that will not take anything of that is thine, lest thou should say, I made Abraham rich. Nobody should say, I made you rich. It was I. Your faith made you a rich man. Your faith put you up. I'm going to close with the last scripture from uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter thir- 3 and verse number 13. But exhort one another daily that you should not depart into unbelief. Exhort one another daily that your heart be not hardened, that you be not hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. People can be hardened in their hearts because of the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold fast to the beginning of our confidence, steadfast unto the end. For we make, we are made partakers of Christ. You're made partaker of Christ. You're made, a, you're made one with Christ. You're brought together. What Christ has, you have. Everything that he has, you have. If we hold the beginning of our faith, our confidence, steadfast unto the end. Right until the end, you're going to say, I believe that God made me like him. He made man in the image. God didn't make us like monkeys. God didn't, we are not born out of monkeys or we're not born out of some kind of a blast or anything. We're born out of Christ, born of God. You are born of God. He shaped you, he formed you. He made Adam and he shaped him, formed him and he breathed into him. He's a creator, God. We are his people. We are his people. He is the creator. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. God made us. You are made in his image and his likeness. Jesus had the same faith that you are living in. Jesus had the same challenges that you have today. Or you might say, Jesus just passed through by because he was... Who are you? Whenever you say, whenever people say Jesus was, yeah, who are you? The only thing that we could not do at that time was that we couldn't die on the cross. The only thing we couldn't ever do because we didn't have the blood to offer. But right now, we are washed by the blood of the Lamb. We have a covering. We have, a, we have been overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And we have, we have been made, God has made an everlasting covenant through his blood. We are made in the likeness and his image. Father God, we pray in Jesus' name. As we come before you, Father, to partake in the covenant meal, your word says you made us one with you. We are made one with you, Lord. You have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You have caused us to live the overcoming life. We are born again, born to the family of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. There is nothing that we have to fear about. Thank you for your grace, your love, your favor, your goodness, your mercies. Jesus, you are all in all for us. No man can take the glory for all that you have done for us. No man can say anything that they have done for us. No man can take the credit or the glory for what you have done for us. We are thankful to you, Lord, for bringing us into this saving knowledge of understanding you and coming to the relationship, coming into a relationship with the true and the living God, the everlasting King, 
when i'm going to follow the patterns of the world the doctrines are vanity what we believe we have faith in christ with no complications at all the world is so complicated demons are so complicated because his head was bruised on the cross we have direct access to the father through jesus christ that's how easy the gospel is believe in jesus so shall you and your household be saved the only one sin that god is going to hold against you the only one sin the only sin that god holds against a person that's in the world is rejecting christ is rejecting christ because he paid for everything on the cross god is talking to the world and saying rejection of christ is the only sin that stands before you because he has paid for all your sins you name the sin he paid it thou shalt not thou shalt not thou shalt he has paid it for all now that we are born into the family of god we are so grateful that we have been released from our old sinful nature we got the nature of christ in us now we are not not struggling to live a holy life we just live holy it was a struggle before we came to christ thou shalt not but i did this i tried my best to keep away but i did it but now that i've come to christ christ is my helper the holy spirit is my guide i have the angelic hosts surrounding me i have people praying for me i have the comfort of the father i have so much of help i have the faith of christ in me that i can overcome temptations or trials or tribulations or problems thank you father this part in the covenant meal while we sing
Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, the champion of our salvation, the captain of our salvation. Jesus, 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 we glorify you. We thank you for dying for us on the cross. And you rose again on the third day. Jesus is Lord. We pronounce Jesus is Lord who died and who rose again on the third day. Thank you, Father, for delivering your Son. And how much more would you give us? Thank you, Jesus, for your forgiveness and your love and your favor. As we partake in this covenant meal, we believe that your healing virtues are flowing right from the top of our head, touching every member in our body, touching all areas in our life, our emotions, our physical conditions, every organ you have been touching us and bringing healing into our internal organs which we have no knowledge at all of. You are doing spiritual recoveries and you are doing a spiritual operation within our bodies. Thank you. We don't even feel it. We don't have to even go through it. There are no cuts and chops in what you do in our internal being. Healing wounded hearts. Healing wounded hearts. It is not your will that be wounded. And Lord, you even remove the scars out of our pain. You remove the scars out of our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for healing our bodies. Thank you for total restoration. You made us new people in Christ Jesus. We are so thankful. We can, we, can, we can keep blabbering and blabbering of all the good that you've done for us, Lord. We don't have to talk about what the world does. We can say how good the Lord has been to us. We can keep speaking over and over again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's partake of the covenant meal. Praise your glorious name. Bless your glorious name. Praise your mighty name. Praise your mighty name. Praise your mighty name. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Just grab a hold of it and say, it belongs to me. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, she grabbed a hold of Jesus' garment. You grab a hold of your healing right now and say, I'm healed by the wounds of Jesus. I'm healed by the wounds of Jesus. I'm healed from the head to the tip of my toe. The, the healing virtues are flowing through, causing all those aches and pains to be removed out of my body. Even the very symptoms to be gone by faith. You may not feel it right now, but believe it's gone. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Gone. Gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Pain, go. Demons, get out. Harassing spirits, get out. Evil spirits, whatever you call your name, we command you the name of Jesus above every other name. So get out in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the healing. Be loosed from every pain in your spine and your shoulders right now in Jesus' name. The anointing has destroyed the yoke of bondage, completely loosing your muscles and every part 
of your body in Jesus name hallelujah say i am loosed from that weakness and that infirmity i'm loosed from that hallelujah. infirmity weakness and infirmity every spinal pain and every shoulder pain i'm loosed from all pains and aches thank you i'm free from it you receive your healing receive the word of knowledge and say if you're hearing here right now you're here maybe you're watching us right now maybe you will watch later but the word of the lord remains that you are healed of, healed of all muscle aches and pains spinal column pains and aches in your body just receive your healing and say i'm receiving i'm receiving every good thing faith receives faith never rejects faith receives faith never questions faith receives every good thing is fear that say oh yeah i don't know whether it will. no faith says i believe it and it's settled in my body thank you lord praise god let's honor him worship him praise him with our tithes and our offerings worship in the bible says we i worship the lord with my tithes and my offerings yes the bible says in you can read deuteronomy chapter 26 and verse 10 i worship i rejoice in the lord bringing my tithes and my offerings unto the lord
Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Truly, you are good. You're going to start joy, O oh Father. Restore joy. Joy of our salvation. Which, didn't the, which the world never gave us. Thank you, Father, for your grace, your love, your favor. As they have honored your people, O oh Father. Your people have honored, O oh Father, that you will honor them, Father. In their workplace, in their businesses, amongst their neighborhood. And Lord, they will have a flood tide of blessing that would come down upon their lives. Even as the windows of heavens are opened. Just for them, O oh Father. Wherever they go. They stay under open heavens. Lord, I thank you for honoring their faith and blessing them. Father, they have honored their faith by bringing into the storehouse that there might be meat in the storehouse. And you have blessed them, Father. You have honored them, kept them strong and healthy spiritually and physically and mentally and socially and financially, O oh God. In every aspect, they are blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and see you next week. And also we'll be having a, a seminar, actually a casual meeting. We will not be having online. It will be only in person uh, uh, on the 23rd, I believe it's the holiday. Uh, we're having a meeting with the, uh, those who are married, husbands and wives. You're welcome to join us. And then children also will have some program for them on the 23rd. 23rd. You're welcome for it. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. We have actually announced in Sinhalese, but let's see how the crowd comes in. If we have to do a translation or most of us understanding Sinhalese, you can join us for that. It'll be only for married couples and those who are to marry. God bless you.